Hello, my name is Ryan Warden. I'm the Manager of Product Training and Support Services at Oxford University Press. And in this video, I'd like to give you a quick tour of the Benazit Dictionary of Artists. Benazit is a comprehensive and definitive resource for artist biographies, which has been published since 1911. It includes 170,000 biographies, as well as auction records, exhibition histories, and over 11,000 images of artist signatures and stamps of sale. Benazit sits on the Oxford Art Online platform, which also includes Grove Art Online. Here from the main page of Benazit, you can see that if I scroll down into the main frame, I have links to a number of featured articles, as well as links to learn more about ongoing and new initiatives across the Benazit project. Here at the top of the home page, you'll see that the content itself on Benazit is available either via search or browse. You could browse here on the left-hand side using these drop-down menus to browse either by art history, art forms, geography, time period, or people. Or you could run a search here in the quick search box on the right-hand corner of the screen. You'll see that from the Benazit homepage, in the quick search box, you'll have this drop-down to make a selection to limit your results either to only results within Benazit or to run your search across all of Oxford Art Online, if you would also like to see Grove Art results as a result of your search. So for example, staying within the Benazit Dictionary of Artists, I'm going to run a search for Andy Warhol. When you run a search on Benazit, by default, your results will be sorted by relevance to your search term. But you'll see here at the top of my results, I have the option in the sort by drop-down menu to change the order in which my results appear on my screen, to view them either by article title or by publication date. On the left-hand side of my results, I have this menu to apply filters to my results so I can narrow down to find exactly what it is I'm looking for on the site. Starting at the top, you'll see I have the option to run this search across all Oxford Art Online if I wish. Under Modify Your Search, you'll see that you can add additional terms to your original search, and in this drop-down, you can specify where you would like your search term to fall within an article, either within the article title, the exhibitions, the heading, the museum and gallery holdings, etc. Below that, you have the option to filter by article format, so to see either full articles or only images. The article type will always be made very clear here in the gray box in the upper right corner of each search result to indicate whether it is a full article, which will also include images, or just an image on its own. Continuing down under format, you can filter further by life event. And here below, we have the rest of the subject taxonomy for additional filtering. So we can add filters for geography, art forms, art history, people, and time period. Finally, at the bottom, we can filter by availability to see only the results within Benazit that we have full text access to through our institution. Going back to the top of my results, you'll see that I also have the option to run a search for this term within the complementary titles that are included as part of your Benazit subscription. These include the Concise Dictionary of Oxford Art Terms, the Encyclopedia of Aesthetics, and the Oxford Companion to Western Art. If you opt to search this term across these three titles, you'll be taken to a results page very similar to what we saw before. And if you select any of these results within these titles, you'll be taken to the full text of these article on the Oxford Reference Platform. Going back to my results within Benazit itself, I'm going to select the Andy Warhol article within Benazit to show you how a typical article will appear on the site. Here on the article's main page, you'll see in the upper right-hand corner, we have a menu of options for saving and sharing this particular article. Starting on the left-hand side, we can download this article as a PDF. Next to the right, we have the option to save this article to our personal profile. We can also cite this article, which if we select this option, we'll get a pop-up screen, which will generate a citation for this particular article, and we can select our preferred citation style in this drop-down here. We can then either copy and paste this citation directly into our bibliography, or below that, we have the option to export this citation using our preferred reference manager. Continuing down, our final two options are to either email a link to this article 
or to share a link to this article on social media. Here in the article itself, you'll see that we can toggle between either viewing the full article, which will include any images included therein, or to view only the images that will be included within this article if we'd like. Underneath the article title, we will have this article's DOI, or Digital Object Identifier, which will allow users to permanently locate this article online. And we will also have all relevant publication dates and update dates. Going into the article itself, at the very bottom of the article text, we will have the list of group exhibitions, solo exhibitions, museum and gallery holdings, auction records, and here at the bottom, we will have the article's bibliography. At the very bottom, we'll also have any related articles on this topic that can be found within Oxford Art Online. Going back to the top of the article, I'd like to show you the personal profile option. All users have the option to create a personal profile on Benazit if they wish, and that will be here in the upper right under My Profile. This is where users can save articles, save searches that they run on the site, and also save any annotations that they're able to make directly onto the screen. The last thing I'd like to show you is the Customer Services page here in the main support bar at the top. On the Customer Services page, you'll find helpful information and links for things such as downloading MARC records, pulling monthly institutional usage reports, and finding free promotional tools. Under Customer Services, you'll also find links to our FAQ and Help pages. And on the Help page, you'll find a step-by-step -step overview for some of the most common things that users will have to do when they go to the site, such as running a search, browsing into content, and creating a personal profile. Each of the help pages will have a step-by-step -step overview of text, as well as a series of screenshots to guide users to the next step. If you have any questions or need additional training, please contact us using the contact information that's available here on the contact page, again, under Customer Services.